the genuinely born-again believers in Jesus Christ. Hello, family. Today I want to talk to you about something that's been on my heart today. And usually the way I do this is, I, I just want to explain kind of what I'm doing here, but basically I just want to do thoughts and, and things that God gives me um, from the perspective of life from the narrow road. So I pray and I ask God to just show me what He wants me to share. And if He shows me something, I share it. If He doesn't, then I don't worry about it. But what He showed me today is it, it focuses on the thief that was next to Christ on the cross. And what do we have in common with that thief? If you think about that for a minute, what do you have in common? What do I have in common? And I'm talking to the genuinely born-again believers. But what do we have in common with that thief? He was a thief and a murderer. He was worthy of execution, and he was hanging on the cross as his execution was being carried out. And next to him was the one they called the King of the Jews. Next to him was the Messiah, the Lamb of God, who was going to the cross to die for the sins of the world. Now, what do we have in common with that thief? Now you have to look at this from the spiritual perspective, but when we are born, when all of mankind is born, we are born on death row. We are born uh, death row waiting execution. But to some, and the few, the Father, by His Spirit, draws us unto salvation and the price that Christ paid on Calvary for the sins of the world by shedding His blood acts as a our sentence was carried out, our execution was carried out, but it was carried out through Christ. Christ paid the price and took our execution for us and we were immediately taken off a of death row and put on the narrow road to life. All mankind is born on death row. All mankind is born to go to execution. And the same thing was with the thief. But the thing about the thief that I notice when, I, when, I, when I'm talking to God about why he wants me to share about the thief is that thief was quickened in a second by the Holy Spirit of the living God to not only recognize what a wretched sinner he was, but also rec recognize the King of Glory that was hanging on a cross next to him. And as they were, as, as the Roman soldiers and, and, the, and the Pharisees were mocking Christ, calling him the King of the Jews, they didn't call him the King of the Jews because they felt like he was the King of the Jews, they called him that to mock him. But as they were calling him the King of Jews and mocking him, the thief next to him was getting the revelation truth from the Spirit of God that this was indeed the Messiah. And he said to him, he said, Lord, and I'm paraphrasing here, but I can only imagine being there. You know, he was saying, Lord, what I'm about to receive, I deserve, but you don't. You don't deserve what's happening to you right now. But remember me, please remember me in paradise. And Jesus said to him, Today, you will be with me in paradise. And when we are genuinely saved through the drawing of the Spirit of the Father, that is like Jesus saying to us, Today, you will be with me in paradise. Now, obviously not maybe today, but basically salvation has happened today. Your, your, your time on death row waiting execution has been paid in full. And you are now free from the bondage of that sin and darkness. So let's think about this today, how Christ has freed us 
from our appointed execution. What a price he paid. We are all deserving of execution, all of mankind. But God decided through his son and through his horrid death at Calvary and crucifixion, he would pay the price for our sin and for our execution. And then we would rise again in his resurrection. It's freedom, folks. We have freedom from the bondage of sin. Freedom to not be a part of the world and walk as the spirit of the world or spirit of Antichrist. We will be with him in paradise. We have received life. Peter said to him, he said, when they were mocking him about, when Jesus said about you, you will, you will eat my body and drink my blood. Some of the disciples even walked away. And he looked at Peter and he said, are you going to go too? And Peter said, Lord, where am I going to go? You hold the words of life. Where are we going to go, family? He holds life. He is the source of life. I think sometimes we take that for granted in, in, our, in our natural state. Let's just remember that he is the source of life. He has paid for our execution and has freed us from the chains of sin. Until next time to the genuinely born-again family of God. God bless.